no Christmas is complete without a little murder and mayhem. As is the case when the Joker's on the loose, as you'll find out in Christmas with the Joker. We're talking about it right now. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in, because 25 years ago today, November 13th, 1992, the episode Christmas with the Joker originally aired. Have I got a show for you tonight. It's loaded with surprises, mystery guests, and Christmas cheer. If you're like me and grew up with Batman the Animated Series and enjoy watching it even today because you've become a huge Batman fan, well, then this show is for you. Hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any episodes and join us as we talk about Christmas with the Joker. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. The Batmobile lost the wheel and the Joker got away. This episode is just plain fun. It's the perfect Christmas episode for Batman the Animated Series. And I have to admit, over the last couple of years, I've, I've dug this DVD out and watched this episode somewhere around the holiday season because it's just saturated with Christmas. Even though he's trying to kill a bunch of people, it, it's still just Christmas fun. And I'm actually, I'm just amazed that they're able to blend those two things together. The sense of holiday cheer and Christmas good feelings and the zany, murderous, mischievous, diabolical ways of the Joker. But they somehow managed to do that in this episode. And we're going to talk about all of that right after I give you my 60 second Joker bomb rundown. It's Christmas Eve and the Joker escapes from Arkham Asylum on a rocket-powered Christmas tree. Robin and Batman are racing out to go survey the city, even though Robin wants to stay home and watch It's a Wonderful Life. Batman insists that they've got to keep a close watch because the Joker is on the loose. They go out on patrol. Nothing seems to be going wrong. They go back to have Christmas dinner. And when they sit down to watch It's a Wonderful Life, Joker has taken over the airwaves. They suit up and they go out to try to track where the signal's coming from because he's threatening to kill Commissioner Gordon and Bullock and uh, I think Summer Gleason is the other person. And as they are on the track, that on the track, then they see that he uh, blows up a bridge. They have to save a train. And then they get to the satellite where the signal's coming from, but that's not where he's at. And then he gives them another clue about this doll and he realizes it's at the Lafco factory of where they used to make that toy factory where they used to make that toy and they pursue him there and then they uh, they finally uh, he, Batman gets a pie in the face and he stops the Joker and uh, and then they go back and they end up watching Batman or they end up watching It's a Wonderful Life <sighs> it's all I wish for for Christmas is to finish one of these doesn't it warm your heart to see everyone in the spirit of Christmas so this episode was the second episode that was produced for Batman the Animated Series. Right after On Leather Wings, it was Christmas with the Joke. Now, here we are several months into airing order, and it's finally close enough to Christmas that they released the Christmas with the Joker. I don't know what the plan was there. I don't know how all that made sense. And it's interesting watching the episode now, after watching so many of the previous episodes, because you can see just a change in the animation and a change of tone and change of style. But there's some key things that are really notable in this. One is Mark Hamill wasn't originally cast as the Joker. It was Tim Curry. Joker here. Greetings, Gotham, and Merry Christmas. I have to wonder what this episode would have been like with Tim Curry in, in the voice and how much of this episode that they actually had finished before Mark Hamill came on. And you can also tell in just the the delivery of Mark Hamill in this performance, it's it's he's still finding his footing. He's still playing around with some things. His laugh is there, but some of the other elements, he doesn't have as much dynamic in his voice as he does later on. Welcome to the first annual Christmas with the Joker. The other thing that's interesting is that Robin is right up up front and center in this episode in a very predominant role and batman is really sharing responsibilities with robin you uncouple the passenger cars i'll get the engineer that's interesting because that, that is almost out of a, a page out of the the 60s batman show where they very much shared their responsibilities and batman obviously was more in charge but robin took a very active role in in helping out 
Whereas some of the later episodes, how do I put this? Some of the later early episodes with Robin, uh, he's not a primary character. He comes in to, to offer a little support or where he's just Dick Grayson and he's, he's kind of a supportive role in that sense. It's interesting to go back and see that Robin, that the first episode produced with Robin, where he was a very predominant figure in the episode. Robin, try and get inside the observatory. I'll draw its fire. And the other thing, too, is that I've even been one to say that in the early episodes, it was a much darker tone or a much moodier kind of film noir. And then this one kind of blows that out of the water. This is this is very bright, very lighthearted, very, I mean, Christmassy. It's very, it's just full of Christmas. So in that in itself makes it kind of lighter and more jolly, I guess. I mean, it does take place at night, and we are talking about murder. But aside from that, it's a very bright and cheerful episode. It's not relentlessly cheerful, is it? I know that I mentioned in The Last Laugh that it was a classic Batman versus Joker fight, and I think that it was. But this story encapsulates the Joker really well. This is where he escapes from Arkham on a rocket-powered Christmas tree, which that in itself is, is very cool. Crashing through the roof in a one horse open tree. Busting out I go, laughing all the way. But this whole story of having Joker escapes, takes over the airwaves, and produces this very uh, egotistical TV show, Christmas with the Joker, and is all just a plot to get Batman to try to figure out where he's at and just to drive Batman nuts on Christmas Eve. Oh, Batman! I hope you're watching, because I've got a very special surprise for you. There's just tons of Christmas things. Uh, it's a Christmas TV special. There's toys, there's gifts, there's uh, even just in the town, there's there's Christmas things going on when they finally get to the Lafco factory. Uh, it's a great battle with the flying airplanes during the Nutcrackers ballet music. I'm going to get that wrong, but it was Nutcracker, some, some music from Nutcracker. And that's why I mean when you see all those elements and you see the uh, the toy soldiers and the gifts and the uh, the candy canes and all those things, it's hard not to get into the Christmas spirit just by watching this. And yet the underneath all that is the Joker threatening to murder three people on Christmas Eve at midnight. If he can find them by midnight. Otherwise... But, but somehow there, there's a great balance there. I think that there's, there's the assurance that Batman is going to be able to accomplish this. And even though even he himself sort of doubts it at one point. It's up to the Joker now. Only a miracle can save the hostages. And then it all wraps up when they arrive at the Lafco toy factory. Again, another Christmas kind of theme and a toy uh, in an abandoned toy factory. And the whole thing was Joker had a, a present to give to Batman to, to put a pie in his face. And that's just so, it's just so Joker. It could have been any number of things that he could have done when Batman finally gets there. But no, he just wanted to put a pie in his face. Backing up a little bit too, that the, the, this episode I feel like does well what Appointment in Crime Alley sort of lacked in is that the, the 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 structure of the episode is Batman and Robin are trying to get to the TV station or wherever Joker's broadcasting from in time. And Joker is creating all of these devices to keep him busy, like the, the train exploding and then the decoy, the signal coming from, from the other antenna and, and getting them there and finding that there's no Joker and having to stop that big gun from firing uh, upon the city. So all those things that was keeping Batman from getting to the location, to getting to the Joker, was being done by the Joker. I'm sure all the folks at home will enjoy sharing this special occasion. So when it came time to rank this episode, I have to admit, I struggled a little bit where to place this because as fun as it is, and as filled with Christmas as it is, I have to look at the whole aspect of it. I do think that it's top 10 material, so I was up in that area. And I do think that this is probably my favorite Joker episode so far. 
Uh, and then so the other episode was Joker's Favor, but the story of Joker's Favor was better. And I think that the Joker is more of a finished character in that whereas this one he's sort of raw a little little rough around the edges and not to hold it against them that this one was produced earlier but it, it just felt a little bit more refined in some of these other episodes and then there was pov so then it kind of fell below that but then pov is just such a good story and such an inventive structure to the story so i place this right below that at the number nine slot of my favorite episodes so far I mean, it's completely different from Tiger, Tiger. Uh, I, I still think that there was enough positive elements of th this episode that just make it so memorable and so fun and so enjoyable to watch on a completely different level of what, uh, whereas Tiger, Tiger has a really great story and really neat characters and, and a very kind of, it's just a totally different style of show. So, it, it, so and I'm finding in this list, that's what's going to be the challenge of building this list. And it is a wonderful life. It has its moments. So let me know, what is your favorite Joker episode in the animated series and why? And it can be one that we haven't reviewed yet, but I want to know what is your favorite? Because so far, this is my favorite, but I know that there's a lot more episodes of the Joker to come. And so I don't want to lock in to say that this is my all-time favorite, but my favorite Joker episode so far. La, 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 la. Ah! If you enjoyed this episode please click the like button and if you're looking forward to seeing more of the reviews of batman the animated series and some of the other bonus episodes that i do along the way be sure to hit the subscribe button now i'll be back on thursday november 16th with another two-parter heart of steel as always i'm andy canode thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon